Uh, welcome everyone uh, to the Northampton Urban Forestry Commission uh, meeting May 1st, 2024. Um, before we roll into public comment, I just want to make you aware of the fact that we have an amended agenda that I believe you should all have. It, it's, uh, it was attached to the original email I sent this morning. It just has the uh, correct minutes from our last, our previous meeting, or the correct date so we can approve them at this meeting. So um, just uh, FYI, uh, there is one member of the public, uh, Jackie. I'm assuming you would like to speak to us. Um, yeah, we just want to try to keep public comment to about three to three, uh, th three to five minutes if possible. So we can just stay on track. <laughs> All right. Uh, should I go ahead, Rich? Sure. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, Jackie McCraner. I live in Northampton, Mass. Um, I have a couple of questions, I guess, and comments uh, in regard to trees and the Picture Main Street project and also a proposed development project um, kind of off my street, which is North Street, and that's off of View Avenue. But I guess first to get to Main Street, um, Rich, I know you're aware of this, that in 2021, August of 2021, you and the Urban Forestry Commission wrote a letter pretty much in support of the city's plans for um, the proposed Picture Main Street project. And if necessary, removing all, all the existing mature public shade trees on Main Street so that the city could carry through its plans for a continuous canopy. Um, I'm really concerned about that, and I wonder if that's still yours and the commission's approach to the Picture Main Street project. So, because this is public comment, we're not not really allowed to answer your questions directly during the public comment. So, um, my suggestion to you would be to continue your public comment while you have the time, and then submit all your questions in writing. Yeah, I did that like a couple months ago and there wasn't any response. So that's why I'm a little yep. concerned about that process. But yeah, I can do that. Um, okay. I do find that frustrating, but I understand where you're coming from. Um, the other, so so that's my concern about Picture Main Street Project is, is the commission um, supporting the city in removing potentially 26 existing mature public shade trees. Um, they range you know, from five and a half inches or even less in at diameter and breast height to um, I think 26 or no, 28 inches in uh, DBH. Um, and so that's a real significant loss. Uh, the main picture has been, um, it's the resilient mass action team has designated it as having high exposure to extreme heat and um, extreme protection. Uh, urban are gonna help with those with those problems. Um, with the with the housing development, you know, as we've done extensive zoning um, changes to promote um, housing infill in Northampton, especially in URB and URC districts near the downtown centers of Florence and Northampton. And there's a stand of really beautiful um, trees and wetlands on North Street. And Sovereign Builders wants to, to really cut down 22 uh, healthy, mature Norway spruce. They range um, anywhere from 20 inches uh, in DBH to 47 inches in DBH. And we're talking about a really wonderful last standing, um, you know, mature forest and wetlands uh, right at the end of View Avenue, which is a dead end off of North Street. If you can kind of picture um, the Bridge Street Cemetery between Bridge Street and North Street, and then View kind of shoots off of North Street away from the direction of the cemetery and between the bike path and North Street, there's this beautiful, um, five acre kind of five plus acres of of really old growth Norway spruce and wetlands. Um, and he wants to take down, you know, about almost 700 inches of DBH in, in tree canopy there. So, um, so I have concerns about that because I think that's a pretty significant stand of trees. 
Uh, anyway, I know I'm taking up too much time, so I'll let you <laughs> go on and look forward to your meeting. And I'll I'll submit my questions in writing and hope to get some kind of response. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I look forward to you sending me an email. Thanks, Rich. Yep. Um, okay, so... Uh, Yes, Kent. Sorry, I forget. Yeah, I see yeah. two members sorry. of the public. Absolutely, go right ahead. I'm sorry, you are a member um, of the public, my friend. Two things. Um, just a quick note that I've discovered it's quite easy to um, record point locations in Google Maps and export them. I use that to find some uh, to document some planting possible planting locations on State Street and Prospect Street and. If people are interested in being able to do that, I'd be happy to write up some directions. Uh, I don't want to bother if it's not interesting. Okay, I'll do that. Um, and then maybe you can address in your tree warden's report, I'm curious about that. I believe there are ash trees in the parking lot uh, outside the EJ Gar garage and, and behind thorns. Um, I'm guessing that those had emerald ash borer and wondering what the plan is to replace them and also if the other um, ash trees on the on the access road coming in from Pleasant Street are also going to be remo removed, um, that was unfortunately some really significant shade in a in a very hot area. So I'm sad to see that they had that they're gone. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Kent. Uh, on to the minutes. I I sent everyone the minutes that Bonnie drafted today in the packet so i'm not sure if people had opportunity to read them my apologies for sending everything uh later than normal but let let me just let me know when you're ready to uh move on them if you've had a chance to read them please molly is good rich parish is good david's good sue's good i'm good jordan I just have one uh comment sure is, did did I move too fast there? No, 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 no. Okay. You're good. I'm just I I'm just um, as Jordan. Jordan's good. Thumbs up. Thank you. Okay. Sorry about that. No? I did, I, um, <laughs> I this is just a question. Um, in the chair and tree warden report, the third bullet, uh, for tree of heaven, it says tree of heaven. Do you also want to include the scientific name of tree of heaven, or it doesn't matter? I don't have a strong opinion. I just you know, wondered if we want to have I mean, a... I, I think probably we, I, it's verbatim for what was said. And I think we just used the word tree of, you know, the, the, yep. Great. the common name tree of heaven. Yep. Okay. okay. All right. Um, if everyone's read them, could I get a motion to approve the minutes as presented? Molly makes a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, we have a second. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion, can we have a roll call, please, Bonnie? Okay. Rich Persolitti? Uh Yes. Mm -hmm. Susan? Yes. Molly? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. David? Yes. Richard Parrish? Yes. And Jordan. Yes. All right. Motion passes. Thank you, everyone. Uh, chair, tree, warden report. So let's see. Um, I'm going to follow. We, I met with. Um, so going back to Turkey Hill Road, we I had spoken to you in the last meeting about the potential for a public shade tree hearing. Um on top of Turkey Hill from multiple trees to be removed to, um, in, so we can, the utility company can install updated utility poles and overhead wires for a house that was going up on top of Turkey Hill. So since that last meeting, uh, the poll petition was, a, the poll petition has been adjusted and approved by the city council, which reduces the uh, amount of trees to be removed to about seven. So, and uh, there are, um, there are seven small trees. I will have a, I'll have a, uh, a list within a day or two I had, but I met with them and basically we, 
we were able because they were able to move the poles to uh, different angles uh, so the wires actually didn't interfere with a lot of the canopy we were able to actually save a lot of trees so mm -hmm. um, a public shade tier hearing will be posted um, as a public meeting probably sometime in mid-may and then there will be a, um, a time for people to comment at the meeting prior to the meeting that obviously people can write to the tree warden uh, and then national grid will be, um, you know, if the um, if the public shade hearing is approved, then national grid will do the removals, uh, and they have agreed to pay all the mitigation. Uh, also, um, there also potentially could be a public shade tree hearing at the end of Glenwood Avenue. Um, this is in re relation to a, a project that has been approved by the planning board at Thirty Nine Day Avenue. So there is uh, that Day Avenue is across from Sheldon Field. Um, Glenwood Avenue is the next street over. Um, they are proposing to develop uh, multiple units in a, a large backyard of 39 Day Avenue. So they were granted access from the end of Glenwood Avenue by the planning board for a drive, um, a one-way drive-through. And there is a, um, a declining Norway maple sort of in the middle of the public right away at the very end. Uh, and I, I, I met with the, um, I met with the developer and we had a discussion about trying to potentially save the tree, but it, the level of construction that's going to happen, the amount of excavation that's going to happen there and trying to retain um, the existing parking spaces on Glenwood Avenue for the residents that live there made it virtually impossible to keep the tree without damaging it beyond uh, you know, beyond it's beyond a, creating a risk level that I'm uncomfortable with. So I recommended that they have a public shade tree hearing and go through the process. And they also agreed to pay for everything, removal, advertisement, and mitigation as well. Um, potentially replanting some public shade trees on Glenwood as part of their mitigation, along with uh, a monetary mitigation. So, our, so that's, that's remains to be seen. That has not, uh, that's not as firmed up as the one uh, for Turkey Hill. Uh, so those are the two tree warden um, items that I have that I can think of. Um, I don't really have much uh, in the way of the chair report other than um, we are, you know, we are coming in the, our normal summer months. We have uh, the month of, so we have the month of May. So my assumption is, is that we are going to want to have two meetings in May. And um, at the end of the meeting, we can talk about this in more length, but I wanted to make sure that the commission was okay going to our summer schedule, which is one meeting per month, um, if that's okay with everyone. So it'd be June, July, and August would be uh, one month, uh, one meeting per month, um, unless you feel the need to meet twice in June, that's that's fine. I mean, the second half of June, I'm going to be away, so I probably would miss that meeting. So it actually works out for me personally if we don't have a meeting but if you'd like to have a meeting we can make it happen so uh and that's uh, uh just a quick recap you know we're planting and i think we can uh, we can talk about that in our uh, spring planting plan but we have been planting um we did receive all of the trees from the um the two nurseries that we purchased them from which was amherst nursery and um Chestnut Ridge, uh, Jen, myself, Sue, uh, I, I, Rich Parish, a whole bunch of folks from Tree Northampton. All of you have all been sort of like working on all of this, so we're 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 at a we're at a good uh, we've had a good start so far. So um, we did also replant the small uh, linden tree that was removed um, as part of the gas um, testing station that was installed in Trumbull Road Park. Some of you might be familiar with that, but there was a tree that was had to be removed that was not a public shade tree because of its size. So they dug it up, they ball and burlapped it, they left it there. It was replanted today in the same park. So we we didn't lose we didn't lose it. So, um, and that's that's about all I have to report. Oh, uh, Kent, I will tell you that the your thank thank you for bringing that up about Army Street. Army Street is on our planting list. Uh, for this for this coming year, um, when we did the original removals on Armory Street, which are next to the brick buildings, 
Um, we've purposely left several of the healthier ashes, so uh, we we wouldn't end up um, creating such a huge urban heat island so quickly. And the other uh, planting areas there, the stumps were ground out pretty deeply. So our goal is to replant that this year. Um, once you leave the end of Army Street, by I think it's, I don't know if it's a tapestry. It's where La Florentine's Bakery used to be. Once you leave that area, that becomes city parking lot. So those trees are not public shade trees. So they are not under my jurisdiction. However, I believe that the parking commission uh, the parking department is interested in replacing trees there. So I need to reach out to the parking maintenance supervisor. Um, but those trees were removed because all of them have, uh, they're infected with EAB mm. along with many others. Yes, Jen. So I just want to, for my own clarity, the yes. ones that are actually within the parking lot. Yes. Pat, uh, towards the parking garage behind where La Florentina used to be. Yes. Those are part of parking. Yes, that is all that is all parking. That's not a public street. And have those been taken down already? They were taken down, yes. Yeah. Okay, but the armory street ones, the ones that are in the actual tree pits, those are ours. Are yes, those are ours. And yes, those belong to the city. They're public shade trees under MGL 87. And mm -hmm. half of them have been taken down with, oh, okay. the, with the intent to um, try to um, do some replacement plantings while keeping those other ashes there to sort of mitigate the urban heat island and not totally take everything away at the same time. So okay. we, we did some pruning. We took some dead wood out. They are definitely, you know, they are definitely showing there's you know you can see the actual eab uh exit holes on the, on the on the lower trunk at this point which is not good because that means they're right the whole tree is pretty much infected but we did we did do some reduction pruning to mitigate the risk of any failures of some deadwood that was above so at least we have some greenery there so it would be it's definitely in the queue for us to get that planted this this year okay so that's something I was going to mention to you in an email, but I we we hadn't gotten I, far yet. Yeah, I think you. I think you mentioned. I it sounds familiar. I think we just talked about it in passing, and it yep. didn't all the way go in or something. Yep. <laughs> okay. Um, any questions? All right. Uh, okay. Moving on to the setback tree planting initiative, the final brochure. Anyone have any comments on the final brochure? And I'm sorry, I sent you a PDF and it actually is sort of upside down. Uh, but it's the way I don't have an electronic copy of the final one yet because I sent, they made a bunch of corrections to it at the very end. And then they, in order to get them printed so we have them for Arbor Day, they haven't sent it back to me. So that's on my list to ask for. So, but that was the brochure that we had on the, a tree whip giveaway table and i sue i my assumption is you gave a whole bunch of them away yes thank you for having that there they're they're beautiful and, and jordan as well so okay and, good. um i've always relied on having a copy of it on the tree warden website so that'll be great when we okay. have the pdf um thank you for getting them for arbor day that that was nice to have I have a slightly, not exactly on the brochure, but on setback plantings question. Sure. Um, one of my neighbors might be interested, but she was wondering if she could get an amelanchia. Is that one we would consider doing? Yeah. Yeah? Yep. yep. Okay. We planted multiples in the setbacks down on Riverside Drive um, next to like a house drop. People wanted them in their very small front yard. So yeah. side of That's their house drop, a single stem amelanchia. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm, and I'm not opposed to actually providing in a small yard, probably like a multi-stem emelanchier as well, if if they want to actually in, encourage planting um, a native plant within the front of the yard, within the setback. I think it would be great sort of to work with people's landscape. So yeah, they have a very so, small yard between the sidewalk yeah. and their house. Right. Yeah, again, I think, you know, right, we talked about a lot about the list and, and the, the, you know, the trees that are on that list. And those are trees that we would like to see planted. But we also 
recognize that there will be other plant material that might fit someone's front yard that actually would be more appropriate. And some people, I mean, also the, the other thing too, is that, you know, if people don't want a large tree, but they want to host a setback tree, um, I think you sort of have to, um, we have to use our best judgment and, 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 you know, try to get as much uh, canopy, whether it's smaller, smaller trees versus larger trees. I think it's very important to try to fill as many spots as possible. <clears throat> Can I jump in and, and urge Molly oh. strongly to have your neighbor fill out the, the form so that it gets in the, so the details are right there for us to work on. And then Christina is great. She gets in touch with them and then um, it can have the conversation. That's the tree we have in stock. Okay. So the sooner, the better. Great. I will. Thank you. Kent. I'm wondering about the door hangers. Are those available? Um, I'd be happy to go and put door hangers on the, the setback sites that I identified on State Street and Prospect Street. I I do not have those yet. Those are coming. Okay. So that that was part of what I wanted to talk about today, because we have a we have a, a bunch of time at the end of the meeting, so we can actually extend some of these time frames if you're okay with that. But I'm, I guess you know, in for the timing of setbacks, and you know, please Jen or. or or Sue or anyone, please jump in that's been doing this. If we want to, if we want to arrange for to have setback planting set for the fall, because that's really what we would start to target. Um, what kind of um what kind of setback initiative um campaign do you uh, campaign? I don't know if that's the right word, but uh, I guess it is the right word. What what would you in where a would you like to start? How would you like to start? What would we like to start by ward? Do we do we tag? Do we use the wards that we have with the information that's in the um, the uh, tree locate the tree planting locations that Molly has um, that we've done over the last couple of years? Because if if we pick a particular ward, um, just want to make sure that we are allowing um, we have to allow the the ward counselor the knowledge that we're going to be doing it, and we have to obviously uh, allow the mayor's office the knowledge that we're doing it in case they get phone calls. So, um, you know, the summer months when we're not planting would be a good time to actually reach out to people to sort of keep the volunteers that are still available to work sort of kind of, ro you know, moving, rolling, um, if if interested. So I'm, I'm curious as to what people's opinions are and what they like to see happen. Um, just, I haven't really thought about this very much, but off the top of my head, um, um, you know, Kent talking about State Street and, you know, Prospect, those are that you know, that's the hottest area of the city. So I would favor, you know, starting there but also we do have a um on grant ave um we have a citizen who i just ran into because i was looking at that street last year and she is willing to get and most uh she's willing to organize the neighbor her, that street it's not it's a dead end not a very long street is very interested in um uh talking to her neighbors she'll she will be the point person and most of those would be setback plantings so i think it would be a you know in the past we've done these little neighborhood plantings and i'm just thinking you know i talked to her i think sue you might have talked to her and i feel like i would hate to like you know be putting stuff all over the place when they had contacted us already. And most of those are, are uh, set, you know, probably setback planting. So that's just off the top of my head. I haven't thought I'm totally open to other people's <laughs> philosophies or opinions. You know, I haven't really thought a lot about it, but I think, like I said before, just uh, starting to concentrate 
you know, on the hottest places to start if we can get, you know, those are cr pretty critical. There's not a lot of tree built in, you know, right within the quarter mile of downtown. So. And if I understand they had um, the Grant Ave, they had a lot of trees removed. So um, Rich may know of other streets that had trees removed. I would suggest as far as the campaign, definitely Kent's locations and Molly's locations. Um, if people want to volunteer to, to as Kent just did to, to do door hangers, there's the um, land on Bridge Road that we don't know exactly the ownership. It might be city right away by the cemetery. Bridge Road out there. Um, no wires, beautiful. You know, it's a fast road. Might calm things down a little bit, but it's a Catholic cemetery. I don't know if anybody wants to take on that. Um, and I think that the ward newsletters are very wide, especially ward five, I think is very widely read throughout the city. Um, my ward one, we have a wonderful newsletter that would be a good place to. How, how much? Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Molly. Um, I also, I did a survey on Ryan Road and I give, I gave that to Jen. Mm -hmm. It's all in a spreadsheet format. Um, I think um, the list planting sites on Ryan Road. So we could do setback. Um, hangers on those addresses too. So can you just clarify the act? Oops, you what? I couldn't hear you. Can you clarify the act? If it's doing door hangers, I'm happy to help with that. Hmm. I mean, how many, how many do, like, I feel like we need to think about this a little bit before we just like, you know, because we, you know, right now, Christina is really the only person who is contacting people who want setbacks. So, you know, she's really handling it. And then we communicate and she funnels it back to Sue and I to get on my planting lists and our tree tracker. And so, um, uh, so I think I, we'd probably need another person who was really willing to not just go out and put stuff up, but to really um, go meet with people, you know, and it takes multiple meetings, you know, Christine is doing a great job, but if we added, you know, 50 more trees to her people, to her list, right. you know, it's, it would be too much, you know? So, so I just, I just think we need to just think about how to roll it out. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not against it. I think, yeah, I, I have no clue what the response would be, you know, but Rich, you're right. I, we need I, to, we need to, you know, really start now and get those staked out so we can get the dig safes in August and be able, and we'll have a list of trees already that they want so we can get the trees and put them in you know we it's all this like pre logistics that we have to get a little good at <laughs> that way yeah it's definitely it's definitely a little different than what we're accustomed to when we're we've been doing street tree plantings where we have a you know different species that we have available to us and we sort of back it in to try to fit the right tree in the right place um instead of uh you know because we've always we always have seemed to buy the stock first and then find the planting spaces right so finally after how many years of doing this together we're going to actually we're going to find the place we're going to know what stock we're going to plant and then we're going to buy it so mm. it's only take you know, it's only taken almost 10 years <laughs> but but i uh what yeah what well said and um you know i'm just from just from a like that's a good point the logistics of it it is a, it's a little different because there's a, a more involvement i mean i i went the other um i see monday i went to magna house on crescent street and i i got that setback squared away uh and unfortunately the 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 uh board of directors they weren't very happy that we had lost the document so i you know i said i i don't know what happened to it my apologies but i'm here to have you sign this and let me see your license and I'll notarize it right here. And that's done and over with. And 
I dig safed it all. So it's ready to go. But you know, that was just me doing one, right? So if you're having someone do 50, um, you know, I also going back to uh, what Jen was saying too about Grant Avenue, that's an interesting concept because that's the same sort of grassroots effort that was done on Middle Street where we, it was almost like a neighborhood planting, but it was a neighborhood like setback planting, but mm -hmm. it wasn't necessarily, it wasn't something that was sanctioned by any kind of a program that we had. It's just, there was one person, there was a point person. I think we ended up planting like 12, I don't know, 12 or 14 trees on that street and setbacks because there are no, there is no tree belt. So that also is sort of attractive to me because then you have sort of like neighborhood buy-in of where you're planting, what you're planting, you know? So I guess the, I guess the question is, is that do we have a couple of different pilots? Do we do a pilot like Grant Avenue? And then do we do a pilot like we go and we try to do a, uh, like Ryan road. We, we try a bigger with the door where we actually physically go and put door hangers and see how many people, how many people are interested in how many trees we can get planted. Um, yeah, you know, it's just, I think it's, we, we just, I, you know, I, I think there's a couple ways of doing it. The question is what, what way is going to work best for us? And <clears throat> we're going to go to places that we don't have, um, stakeholders that are interested. We're going to go there and hang them and then they're going to call someone they're going to email us uh, or they're not going to email us. So, but I definitely agree with you. It's too much for one person. If we end up like with all of a sudden 50 extra setbacks. We almost have to like start with recruiting another person who, who has the time to meet with these, meet with people. And then you, know, you have to get them up to speed so that they know what to say. And they have to keep in contact with Jen or me to see what trees are available and learn about the trees so they can, as we say, sell the trees. Um, a lot of the trees we plant aren't familiar to people. And it does take some engagement to um, to have them fall in love with the trees, like rubber trees and Kentucky coffee trees. They They don't know. So I'm, I know I'm, I'm sort of at your leisure, whatever you, whatever the, whatever capacity you think that we have, I'm, I'm willing to try to support, you know, logistically on, on the tree warden end. Yes. Um, I can commit. It was, it's been kind of on my radar that I really feel like we need to um, honor the grant ab just because, um, you know, they contacted us and we just couldn't. Rob was leaving, you know, it was kind of in that time period. And um, I just feel like I, I'm willing to meet with her and try to get things going and have a, I've, I've got some time in the, you know, in June or something that I can, you know, maybe we can set it up, you know, pretty early. And I'll send you Lydia's meeting. info. Yeah, that'd be great. I, I'm willing to do that. Um, that wouldn't be too heavy of a lift because it's all in the same place too, you know. It's yeah. not, but I'm not saying we shouldn't try to do another place. I just am a little, I think it should be smaller chunks or smallish chunks, not like all over the city. Cause I don't think we have the capacity to, you know, meet with people. So we actually had a little flurry after Earth Day and Arbor Day in the setback requests. Hmm. Yes. Yep. I saw the emails. So, I mean, I mean, that's, you know, I, the other thing too, is that thinking about the capacity to meet with people, it's also, if we actually ramp up and we end up, we have capacity for plant material, finding plant material, you know, pr procuring it. Cause this past, this spring, we didn't, uh, we did not do any contracts with vendors. We just, we bought uh, trees up to the uh, contract threshold. Uh, because we we had trees left over so you know we that's a whole nother that's a whole nother concept is the contract issue if we do a lot of trees and then it's also the capacity of the volunteers at tree northampton 
you know, to sort of, so if we had a lot of setbacks, it's almost like the, we would have a shift in our dynamics from um, doing you know, tree belt plantings to maybe all setback plantings or, um, but as we have seen, we have utilized a lot of our prime um, places uh, on the tree belt. The other thing I was thinking about is it would it be helpful to use uh, Kent's data that he put together that was a derivative of um, the uh, the tree, the tracking list that I have in the Excel sheet to figure out actually where we have planted the least amount of trees and determine if that would be a place where we'd want to focus on doing setbacks. If there are places, according to the data that Molly has, would the setbacks work there? that's another way of looking at it but that might actually that might be doing like a really big chunk but we could go street by street we could pick small streets um you know but it's nice to actually finish sort of finish up the arterial routes like like ryan road uh bridge road the empty spots that are there that people might be interested in getting a tree planted and um you know that would help with the safe routes to school um shade the sidewalks etc like we which was our original um one of our original goals so i don't know i, I that's really all i have i i was just trying yeah, to I, I think the volunteers for things like come out and plant um is completely different from go represent the program talk to a homeowner who maybe you know has complaints or something about other things and kind of have to be diplomatic and know a little bit more. That's that's where I think the only volunteer bottleneck is, is that kind of more nuanced where you keep having to go back and follow up on something. You make an appointment and then there's follow up and trying to talk them into the trees that we that we that fit in with the city goals. Yeah, that's not atypical. Uh, I could just give you a an example. Uh, Christina um, recently had a place that was wide open and could put, um, I think it was five trees on this property, and the person was really willing. And um, you know, she did. She went back and forth three or four times trying to get this person to, you know, take some underrepresented trees species and. You know, and it, it came down to no pods, no nuts, no, you know. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? It's, uh, we're going to get trees in there, which is a good thing, but we are not <laughs> going to be able to get these behemoth trees that we could have put in there with acorns on them. So, um, but, you know, it's, it's what, uh, you know, kind of what you were talking about before, Rich, to get, you know, a smaller tree in there maybe it's okay you know so it is a lot it is a lot of um you know going back and forth and and I helped Christy and I you know we she called me and we talked about it and it's always better to have more than one brain on it anyway so um you know that's as we kind of brainstorm here it, it occurs to me Jen learning more about how the groupings are made for plantings mm -hmm and seeing how much time and effort it takes um, as we have fewer places close together. Right. So figuring out plantings that where you can have the city deliver the trees and have volunteers show up and be able to keep quality control. Um, that does lend itself to something like Grant Avenue where you have somebody doing some of the back and forth. You give mm -hmm. Lydia the list of trees mm -hmm. and see the best, you know, encourage her to, you know, get the biggest trees mm -hmm. and see what she can do. And then they get delivered to one place. The volunteers go to one place. You can involve mm -hmm. new people in the tree program so that they experience it. Um, I think that's why we like the grassroots, like Rich was saying. Mm -hmm. Just brainstorming here that um, seeing seeing how hard it is to do the groupings. <laughs> Open my eyes. You're working. That's a lot of work, Jen. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thanks. 
M but Ryan Road, Ryan Road is a good possibility though, because we that's a ward we've had um ongoing kind of challenges to get into. And um, you know, if if all you need is one street and then the other neighbors are like, wait a second, you know? So, you know, that may I mean that's a plus on that end too. So Ryan Road, you said I made a note of that. But also, you know, I like Kent's uh idea too because it's in the you know in the downtown so yeah i like that state street idea it's hot and it's like molly yeah. has kent's dad and molly's dad have been kind of coordinated i think so Did you guys Did meet get i think kent got it from my data didn't you kent yeah you're, oh good you're talking about your um quarter mile radius walk around mm -hmm. yeah i've made a map with that. I'm not sure about coordinating. Um, actually, most of the, my spots are not within the quarter mile radius. Oh. Most of, on State Street, it only goes out to um, like where the State Street fruit farm is. It does not go out to the really hot part of State Street. That's true, yeah. So wait, so your points do not overlap that much with mine? I don't think so. I haven't looked. And actually, my website is kind of broken right now. Oh. Um, hmm. Although I guess I could look at my um, local copy. But no, I'm not I'm not sure. Molly, could you just how many locations off the top of your head were on Ryan Road just for like a numbers? Do you think? Um, I'm guessing somewhere around maybe 60 or something so that's that's like six weeks of planting like if you were you know <laughs> if they all worked out yeah not right so i'm out. just like i'm trying to like think of like <laughs> physical not not to mention all the legwork that goes in front of it to get the setback but mm -hmm. yeah i mean that's 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 a that's a third of what we planted last year you know that's um that's that's pretty good Okay. But I'm not all up. those were setbacks, right, Molly? I, I haven't had time, no. to be honest with you, yeah. to look no. at the okay. list yet. They're so. not all setbacks. Some of them are, are right of way trees. There's some okay. there's some areas where there's really wide, like up to five feet of right of way, not under a wire. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. When I get when I get uh um I had to go to my dad, so when I get back, like uh, you're on my list to walk with. So I just got waylaid to Pennsylvania. Um, over Earth Day, um, Barbara from the Rotary Club and their grants person and I had a conversation while we were planting that um, there's a grant they could apply for for, for planting trees and um, for schools. And I think that the deadline is summertime. So that's like another kind of direction I can get in touch with her and ask her for more details on that. That's certainly Rich's, Rich's area if it involves another organization and it involves um, some kind of um, funding for a project. But David, you ha you were working on, um, on uh, JFK, right? You met with some people and... Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, the next action there is to do a walkthrough uh, which I'd love to do with you, Jen, and Rich in July, maybe the second or third week in July. But um, Sue, just because you mentioned it, it this can you explain more what this grant? It was you know we were outside planting, so we have to. It's a ro it's rotary money. Internet Rotary International can provide money for projects, and they're going to look into that. So. Um, I wanted to run it by certainly Rich before I got any more information about it, but it, I think Barbara was thinking of schools because she's a former school superintendent. And so schools are near and dear to her heart and this is something you've been working on. So it might that might fit together as another kind of fall, one of the days in the fall or something. Shall I, Rich, shall I ask for some details? Sure. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I do. Big question would be is that would 
the the money would be funneled from Rotary to the city to purchase material. I mean, I'm not, you know, those are the kind of questions like who's going to manage the grant and well, what these are, are these right. tri these can get complicated. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So that's, that's like don't want to do anything without you. Yeah. No. 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 It's fine. I, Ask I'm, Barbara I'm very, just about the details. Yeah. Dates. Yeah. I'm very interested in in trying to understand. Um, their uh you know, what their grant process is and the process yeah. and the um like the what is the funding mechanism yeah what are the funding mechanisms are is there uh any match that we are responsible for doing um sort of like a dcr challenge grant or other grants okay i'll get more again this was okay. like out in the field okay conversation uh D david going back to jfk please uh when you have a moment and you know, in sometime in late May or early June, send send us a couple of dates that, or you know, are you going to reach out to Tony? Is that is that how that would work? You email Tony yeah, and yeah, I'm I'm kind of waiting to hear back okay. from him. Okay. Yeah, they've been. Well, a little... I propose some times, and I haven't heard back. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Then I'll just wait to hear from you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah, that's great, David. David, I've worked for the city for 35 years. You've had a lot better luck than I have with getting trees planted in school property. I'm very impressed. Tenacity, bro. <laughs> I actually think you might make a good tree warden after I retire. I think this might work out here. <laughs> uh, Just as far as the overlap between the sites I found and Molly's sites, um, the quarter mile radius in downtown only went out as far as Michael's house on State Street. And there are um, actually some overlaps. There's, I, there's a couple of possible sites at Michael's house and at some of the businesses just uh, inbound from there. But um, most of my sites are then further out from the center, further north on State Street and then Prospect Street is, is, of course, not at all near the town, not a quarter mile from the town center. Um, but those are very streets that have very high pedestrian use though. I mean, yes. prospect, people are walking to the Y, people um, walk the synagogue. to the synagogue, the high school, um, there's a daycare up there. So I, you know, on prospect and, you know, State Street people are walking on that all the time. So yeah, you can get the stop and shop on State Street. State Street gets very hot in the yeah. mm -hmm. section between, like be, from State Farm out to um, well, Bright Avenue. That those few blocks get extremely hot in the summer. My impression is there's not a lot of space for planting trees there. There's not a lot. Um, there are some the Michaels House spot, and then I think you and I both identified a couple of sites in front of the. Um, like the neuro something place next to on the corner. Uh, it's it's next to the, I guess the groceries or whatever the vacant, the stereos and then there's a vacant spot and then there's a like some kind of a professional office that has a green railing in front. There's some possible sites there, and I did find some um, setback sites and also some tree belt sites that I think look. Promising that the tree belt is very narrow, but there are existing trees there. Um, there's one block that has a couple of um, crab apples, and there's definitely room for probably two or three more uh, on that same block. Um, so we put some uh, honey locusts in really pretty narrow tree belts on Trumbull. And when we were planting them, I was like, Rob, boy, I don't know. And they're doing great. Mm. You know, they've grown a lot. We've had to prune them. You know, they're, I, I'm a convert. <laughs> <All right. laughs> well, it's definitely needs something that can do it, work in a narrow tree belt. I think it's probably two feet, most of it. Um, Except there's one spot up near the corner with um, Summer Street where it gets a little bit wider. Hmm. Well, we did what? have develop a contact with the owners of Michael's house, so that might be okay. That could make an impact. 
So, so what I'll do is, I guess, just to wrap up, Jen, you're gonna you're gonna contact, um, uh, what is her name, Lid Lydia or Lydia? Lydia on Grand Ave. Yeah, yeah, I can. I'll I'll do okay. that. All right. After and then, after and then, we, the planting season. Okay, and then you'll have it. You'll take a look at the data from Ryan Road. Yes, with Molly. Yep. All right. Yep. And then when I get the uh, door hangers. The actual um, the hangar itself, I will let folks know, and then we can hopefully we'll we'll have another we'll have a meeting before that. That we'll have a meeting after I get them, so we can discuss how we're going to distribute them, so I can just make the appropriate notifications. Um, you know, so if we're going to do the areas that like the small area on State Street that Ken was talking about, for example, I just would want to notify Councilor Moulton that we'll be doing that. Etc. and other places. So, um, I mean, the, the sky's the sky's the limit. There's a lot of green grass uh, behind the sidewalks everywhere. So, um, but thank you for everything. Thanks for all your help with getting. I, I'm sorry it was a little arduous, but I'm glad we revised it. I think it looks great. I did find out today that we could have turned, and I didn't know this, and uh, that the Google address that's in there that is sort of long and sort of looks like someone talking gibberish for the setback agreement. I could have made it as just a tiny URL with backslash. I didn't even know that. So, but, oh. but we have so many copies now, we're just going to use them up. And then when it comes time, we'll change it. So it looks a little neater, but I think it came out great. So thank you for all your, your uh, work. Um, okay. Uh, moving along to uh, spring planting and Arbor Day report. Um, Stu, would you mind giving us an update? I'm going to do the on the Arbor Day aspect of it and the seedling giveaway and okay. I'll the start customers with that you had. Thursday, the 20th of um, 20th of April, we planted. We had a fantastic planting at um on um ice pond drive with 12 trees we had a lot of volunteers but it was really calm and wonderful and just a great great day out and um jen provided the quality control thank you very much running around making sure that um the trees weren't planted too deep or too not deep enough <laughs> and all the other little details. And um, then let's see, sorry, I didn't prepare this ahead of time, but then, and it's been a whirlwind. Then um, I think there was a planting the next Wednesday. Is that the case? And no. I'm not, I don't have the number in front of me, what was planted. So basically we've had three or four plantings and I'm not sure the exact number of trees, but I would assume it's about 30. Pretty maybe less. Less, maybe 20. Yeah. Like 22, maybe. 22. Yeah, okay. we had, so I think we've had, uh, not including today, we had three, three, three plantings up to the day after Arbor Day, because we didn't plant on Arbor Day, I don't think, right? We didn't plant, right. we just did the whip giveaway. Sue, what was, Sue and Jordan, what was the uh, whip giveaway? Um, how did that go? And it was well received. I only have a bucket of a couple of seedlings left. So thank you for, mm, thank great. you for saving the few. It um, was, I can speak to Saturday and the general process. Jen um, got the trees up to the high school and then they, um, um, they, the students bagged them, but unfortunately they didn't all come. So we had trees arrive on Friday and I, I bagged a lot of trees. I had a sore arm and um, mm. we bagged them in front of city hall. We bagged a whole bunch of trees and then I bagged them that night. And then it, the next morning I got down to city hall and had the volunteers start bagging more of them because it's mm. bagging trees is a big project. And when, um, you know, 400 of them came on time and the other 200 were delayed due to a flood in a facility. So that was, that made it interesting. The public was so grateful for all the tree work we do. 
um, everyone talking to me. We um, seems like other years we've had people come up and say trees are messy and so forth, but I didn't hear any of that this year. I just heard, thank you so much. Thanks to all the volunteers. Thanks for giving out the trees. The people who were picking up the trees seemed to have a plan for where they were going to put them. Um, we had some signs to remind them to protect them from bunnies and um, specific details on watering it every day for the first week and so forth. So that seemed to go well. Um, Saturday, I just did set up and I left Jordan. Jordan, you want to take it from here? <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. Um, people, to echo what you said, Sue, were very appreciative. Um, they seemed to have an understanding of you know, what they could do with the trees. And I tried to sort of give, as folks asked for trees, I tried to like, what's your site like? And, you know, what types of um, growing conditions, et cetera. So we tried to sort of match them with the best uh, possible choice. Um, yeah, I th there was some stuff left over. I did bring some uh, trees down to the farmer's market. Um, and um, so I think, you know, there's even a potential for next year to do um, perhaps some sign or a banner across, um, you know, Main Street because folks did um, sort of walk by and we had sort of people on the fly interested in learning and going away with some trees. But um, and interestingly, the red oaks were the least uh, sort of appreciated and uh, we're left with some of those. Um, certainly the, what folks thought of as ornamentals and, um, you know, actually in this area of shrubs. Monterey Holly and those were asked for quite a bit, as well as um, dogwoods. They went through quickly, and um, tulip tree. A lot of leftovers, folks. Really oh, really? Yeah. Oh, the, yeah. Oh, yeah. They were popular uh, so, on Friday. Great, that's great. You know, and as sort of times are closer to noon, I sort of like, hey, take one, take three. You know, um, <laughs> and um, so I tried to sort of push them off on people, but it was. I try to be judicious in the beginning. It's hard to kind of gauge um, what the um, interest would be, but um, you know, overall, it was great, and I think it was just like a good vibe, and people appreciated that, and understood the intent. So hopefully, that and, and working with Andy was great. He sort of impressed upon folks that the idea is being around. So, and um, well, thank you, thank for for I usually through the Saturday, but it was great to have you there, Jordan, with all your um, arborist knowledge. It's, it's just like a different tone, I think, when you have a real arborist there and not just like salesperson. Like and Molly, thank you so much for being there too. It was really great. I was curious what um, trees ended up coming in on Friday. They were Hawthorne and uh, more Winter Ray Holland. And actually okay. there's some Caria as well. Some That's what I was wondering. Yep. Did people want a hickory? They didn't quite get it. Um, you know, folks that sort of, I mean, from my perspective, first of all, it's, it's interesting and rare to even see hickories like that in, in any kind of growing uh, setting because they're just so darn hard to grow, right? You have, you know, sort of 12 to 18 inches of of what is actually a tap root um, and then, oh. you know, eight inches above. Uh, and so, People didn't quite get it. Um, I tried to sort of explain to folks what a great wildlife tree it is and what a great you know, shade tree, et cetera. Um, but they don't have a whole no a bit of a great amount of knowledge about them. Um, yeah. Hmm. So we didn't get any red buds in? No. Uh, no, and I took, I, I had a list of, I don't know, 50 names we typed up, volunteers helped me type, and then I typed the rest up. A bunch of them bounced because the handwriting was illegible. So if anybody gets a complaint, nobody emailed me. Um, mm -hmm. it, chances are, you know, we we really tried to get in touch with everybody um, and tell. And I informed people the red. We're sorry to say the red buds did not come in. We will have the holly, the hickory, and then you know these are amazing trees. You got to come get them. <laughs> It was and a lot of fun. Was, I enjoy that kind of interaction with the public. So it was, it was fun. Oh, you're really good at it. Uh, Jen, how did the planning go? Uh, the plantings have been going well. The volunteers are raring to go. The planting groups have been a little bit smaller. Um, you know, we've planted every uh, Wednesday and Saturday since uh, 
We planted on Ice Pond Drive. So we've had, I don't know how many plantings that is. Um, we, you know, it, it's been, um, uh, the city has a new platform for their trench permits. So I think that's been challenging, you know, putting that in the mix. And we're also having um, a transition between Alicia doing the dig safes to Tom, Tom Bassett, which I think is going okay. But, you know, we're just, we, we don't have quite enough totally through the, through the pipeline planting sites. We have the planting sites and we have the trees. We just don't have, you know, we haven't gotten quite up to speed with the dig safe. So um, we, I do have some groups for next week and I'm really hoping the next set of dig safes, uh, Tom said he was going to put them in today. I haven't seen them. Okay. So um, I, I'll have to text them again to see what happened. So we may, you know, have a little hiccup here if we can't, you know, process them fast enough. Um, it's just, it's, we've just had like a little bottleneck with them. Um, getting the dig safes and the trench permits. So um, the next group is pretty big. So hopefully, you know, we've got a big planting on Stoddard, you know, for example, we've got a lot of setbacks on Stoddard that are lined up to go. And we're trying to prioritize the tulip trees to get those in too. So, and then the, the other, you know, just so people for tr transparencies, you know, when uh, Christina's doing the setbacks, you know, there's a lot of back and forth, so we can't really put in a dig safe until they turn in the paperwork. So, you know, that's another, you know, it's just, there's a lot of moving parts that have to come in. So we might, you know, we have, I don't think we've had as many trees going out, but um, we're planting and, you know, what it's all, you know, we're getting the, you know, kind of the wheels back on the track after, you know, Alicia and Rob left. It's it's been a you know, and they changed stuff at the city level, which has been challenging. That's been very challenging. I know for Rich and you know, there's not enough tech support at the city level, and you know, it's it's uh, challenging to get it done. So, but you know, we're putting trees in. The tree stock that we got is really in good condition. Like the root balls we've been putting in have been really, really some of the best. I think they're really good. Yeah. So and the quality of the trees, you know, even those gnarly uh, Kentucky coffee trees look pretty, pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> so I tied, tied them all. Can, I tied them all up. Yeah, they can often look a little, you know, but but they they're they looking pretty good. So. Yeah. All right. I just want to tell make sure everybody knows the mayor worked really hard planting on on um earth day as did um um city councilor marianne uh, labarge marianne labarge thank you and then um there was another city councilor there from the ward jeremy i'm sorry i forgot his last name mm. jeremy He's uh, taking pictures and just mm. being part of it yeah that, that that's great um just uh you know the seedlings that you gave away um Thank you very much for distributing them and thank you for all the hard work. I truly appreciate it. The seedlings that you gave away were uh, part of a much larger statewide seedling giveaway. Uh, the Mass Tree Wardens, I believe, in the end, I think we sold 35,000 seedlings to uh, other many other communities and organizations across the Commonwealth. And we actually sold some to some gentleman in Ohio. So, uh, strangely enough, so, but I mean, it's, it's really, um, and a lot of people have based a lot of their Arbor Day activities around the seedling giveaway. So it's a really nice kickstart, um, I think every spring. So, um, hopeful that, um, next year we'll get seedlings and they will be on time. Um, uh, but you know, mother nature has a way of correcting everything. So as mother, mother nature's way of saying, slow down, take a deep breath. Hmm. They'll come in due time, you know, take it easy. <laughs> so, um, and again, I, uh, because I work with mass tree wardens, I'm trying to pick the seedlings. I'm always trying to find diverse stock 
um, things that we, we don't necessarily see and also trying to add um, more native stock. Um, so again, it sometimes can be a hard challenge, but you know, little by little. And I did learn fun fact, and Jordan probably knows this and I didn't know this, but <clears throat> they had a lot of frost this past spring. So they had a hard time digging. They had a hard time digging the trees because apparently at night when it gets to be mm. about 33 degrees, um, what they do is they have staff on site. They actually turn the irrigation on and they cover the trees completely with water and the water freezes to the to the tree to the, to the little seedling and encapsulates the whole tree oh yeah protect it from frost damage so if you if you mm -hmm. had a minor amount of bud break um and you didn't have that ice coating the the frost would kill the the seedling in the field cuz everything that we get is all uh, field grown mm -hmm. so I, I it blew me away i talked to one of the nurseries on the phone they were explaining to me the delays and i i was like that is incredible never dawned on me so that you would think that ice would have the reverse effect, but actually ice is protecting the seedlings as the temperature drops below 32, the seedlings completely covered. So kind of a cool process. It's so interesting. I know they utilize that really good picture the growing areas to encapsulate the um, trees uh, when the temperatures drop in spring. Um, it's the same, same exact technique. So it's super interesting. Yeah. It is. It's very, very cool. So, um, but I, I've never worked in a nursery, so this is, you know, I, but it's a field that I'm interested in. Not that I'm going to start another career at this point, but it's just really interesting to know where the stock comes from. Um, uh, because as, uh, some of, some of us have heard from Francesco Farini, that's, you know, uh, he said that basically in order to, uh, provide the, the trees that we need to, for the billion trees campaign across the world, we need a nursery the size of Canada. So that, I still think about that. It sort of blows me away. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. One thing I'll say about the trees you received, they, the small stock, they were terrific quality, uh, really good root, root structure. Um, and it was easy to see that, you know, the oaks and the um, uh, the hickory were, you know, seed grown. There's so much variation, right, in the size of the roots and the height and the size of the buds. And, you know, that's just so interesting. And that's what authentic, you know, good stock looks like. That's good. That's good to hear. The the nursery will be happy. Uh, any other comments about Arbor Day? Um, did you feel that seven hundred trees was doable? If everything was like in a a better time frame, do you think seven hundred was a good number? Do you think we should go back to six hundred? I mean, from this is my first time doing, it, obviously, and um. The, like I said, a couple of trees were a harder sell. Like field trees, I, I think it's really good that we had these native trees, but the field trees, especially the red oak, I think people just kind of get like the death being like, ah, I found a dozen red oak. And that, so this is, I understand the overall value um, of an oak tree per se. Um, and you know, the wildlife value, the you know, on and on. Um, so we were stuck with a fair amount of those. Yeah. Um, I think. The, what seems to be the easier sell is the ornamentals. Um, people can relate. They understand that with very, you're going to get the name, right? Very. So they're going to get some kind of visual um, dividend off of that. Um, I, okay. So that's that, my that's, first time. Hard to gauge. Yep. That's Jen. It just This is relate, unrelated to the numbers, but uh, I just wanted to pipe in about the high schoolers. Um, the, I work with two science teachers at Northampton High, and they are so excited about it. They're really easy to work with. They set the whole, we do it out in this parking lot, and they set up tables and get, get me water. And they, they were, it was great. You know, I mean, I think we touched probably, there was three groups. It was probably 130 kids that um, helped. Wow. So, you know, and I explain Arbor Day, I explain about the tree commission. So it's pretty, um, they're, they, you know, they even said they'd go, they would help on Friday if they needed to, but, you know, we didn't get them in time. The school was already out, and, but, um, but uh, Dan Moylan and um, Megan, I can't remember her last name, but they're both uh, science teachers. So they, they're just great to work with and, um, 
enthusiastic and the, the students had a great time. It, it was just really, it's great. It was just really mm -hmm. good. So, so it's just another aspect of, you know, in behind the scenes, how, uh, you know, this Arbor Day is affecting people, you know, and it's really, you know, bringing, oh, I made a connection with a student who uh, is going to kind of shadow me and some of the stuff that I do. She's, she wants to, you know, explore kind of the arbor culture field and urban forestry a little bit. She has a, a year off. So I was going to talk to you, Rich, maybe she could, you know, on sure. a good day, she could shadow you for a day or something. Good luck. So, yes. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, but no, anyway, it'd be fine. you know, I just it'd to be kinda, fine. I'm just yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But I just that's, um that's great. Yeah, it it's pretty cool. Thank you again, everyone. Um for pulling it off. Every year we we always have some hiccups, but we always seem to pull it off in the end and everything goes well. We've been doing this, we're like sort of a well oiled machine. We've been doing this for this is uh 2016. Or 15. I mean, we've been giving seedlings away for a long time, but like as a group, it's been almost 10, it's been 10 years, almost 10 years. So it's pretty impressive. Um, and the reason I know that is because today I was, I got the Arbor Day proclamation and I have a, um, a frame that I have, I had it made specially for the proclamation because they're all the same size. So I have all the proclamations going back to like 2000 and I think 13 stuffed in there. So I was looking at them today. So, wow. Uh, but I wasn't the tree warden then. I was the tree, uh, I was the tree warden in 2014, I think. So it's interesting. So we did celebrate Arbor Day in some fashion prior to um, this commission's inception. We had a, the old tree committee that did the seedling giveaway, but it wasn't like it is now. Um, so we've come a long way. It's a very, something to be very proud of. So thank you. Uh, does anyone have any other business not anticipated by the chair? Just a quick I, I just shout have... out. Sorry. Was... No, no, go, go ahead, ahead, Jordan. Go ahead. You go first. I was going to say a quick shout out to Rich Parrish uh, and your team for all the fantastic turning up. Uh, your voice is fading out, Jordan. Sometimes it, it cuts in and cuts out. Yeah, is this better? Yes. Yep. Yes. Just a shout out to Rich on the excellent pruning um it's able to see this time of year um how how good the cuts are uh the judgment calls and mm -hmm. it's just a, a you can see how much work has been done so yeah the high quality and good stuff that's great thank yep. you i had a quick question it, either one of you can go yes um right. quick question did you ever get contacted rich about the um of trees being removed by National Grid at the homeless encampment behind the gas station, between the gas station on King Street and the railroad tracks. I have, I am aware, I am aware of it, but I wasn't, I was made aware of it verbally, not like any formal email or anything. It's nothing that we have any control over, right? No, it's private property. Yeah. Yeah, and it's not under any kind of site plan approval planning board. It's long, it's the National Grid owned all of that strip that was uh, part of uh, the old Northampton rail yard many years ago. This is sort of when they bought the bike path that was the rail line that went to Williamsburg and um, to uh, Amherst. Mm. Mm. So, no, uh, Rich. Okay, yeah, I uh, have a new initiative that I'd like to float past this group and Today's discussion is, it's not meant to be a, a big discussion, but just for your consideration. And then if we uh, if we support the idea, I can flesh it out more in the future. But, but if, we, if it's a given that Northampton is a very art-centric city, you know, public art. So, you know, they paint the, the sides of buildings, they paint the utility boxes, the streets, they carve, ice carving is a big thing. But there is... Another opportunity within our uh, authority that we could lend to the art community, and that is when large mature trees are cut down in the tree belt or right away, 
if the tree is left as a stump of some particular height, we could have local artists carve those stumps, leaving another you know public art uh, piece for the for the public to enjoy. Now this might need to be done in association, say, with the Northampton Arts Council, where they would, you know, pick appropriate artists. Uh, you know, the tree warden would pick appropriate trees. There, there's lots of various discussions to be had about this, but uh, I have seen in other cities some very significant art sculptures on old trees which I think is a far greater improvement than, than a stump or a, yeah. or, or a blank space. Um, so that's the, that's the executive summary of it. Yeah. Um, do, do folks think that this is something worth pursuing? I think it's a cool idea. Don't you have some pictures? Like Wendy showed me a picture when we were planting. Um, yeah, I, it would have them handy to me, but maybe next time it could. But if, for instance, the city of Galveston, Texas, lost you know hundreds of mature oak trees during one of their hurricane floods, and so they turned many of them into uh, wood sculptures, which is now a, a tourist attraction when one drives down their main streets. Uh, but in in various other cities have done it in. Uh, and I can show some examples next time. But... Well, let's get you on. I can put it on the agenda as an item. Okay. And then you can maybe flush out those photographs and give us a little. I, um, oh, yeah. If you do a screen share with me, I can, I just pull some up just on. Oh yeah. Hold on a second. Yeah. Sorry. Let me. Uh... And, and Rich, is it in your authority to say grant citizens the right to do such a thing um uh, well it's in my authority as a tree warden to allow obviously you know to follow the public process to have the trees um removed and then you would leave a certain amount of the stump for yeah for people to carve i i'm it would be an interesting concept because you know our we have ordinances that uh, require people to get approval to work in the public right away, and the question is is that w what would this constitute? How would that fit in that ordinance? Because right, this is right. usually when people are in the public right away, they're installing something and they're digging something up, um, they're building something. Um, you know, no, you all, might, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, you might look into that. Is okay. You know. It, 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 or it, could there be some dead ends here that would uh, just stop this initiative from even starting? No, I mean, so like one of the things that I would say is that, you know, by the time we typically take down a public shade tree, there's, it's really, you know, either been severely pruned or it's, it's in it's in decline and some of the trunks actually probably would not be suitable for carving of course. when you have when you have a large storm event like you're we're talking about in galveston you have a lot of uh live trees that are damaged very quickly so you have um the trunks are still other than the damaged part once it's removed they're still sound and they're still probably carvable so it'd be interesting to see how and I'm sure an artist could be crafty. Like if there's a trunk, a tree that's hollowed out that we left a trunk, how would they manage carving that? You know, I, I don't know those questions or the answers to those questions. I mean, so, um, so I think we would have to, a sugar maple would be a good example of a tree. You could probably do a good carving in because sugar maples typically die from the, you know, they have tip die back. They, they die very slowly from the canopy and they have a lot of canopy decline, but the trunks are typically solid. Um, hmm. thus the nickname rock maple. So, um, so I mean, yeah, I, I, it's very interesting. I never, you know, my, my whole thing's been, when we take a tree out, I want to replace it, but, uh, maybe we just replace the tree a little farther down the road. I, I don't know. So, but I, but I think it would be, it'd be definitely a worthwhile, uh, 
conversation to have and, and I, I'm looking forward to a little more detailed discussion. Okay. And I'm sure the arts, I think the art scene would probably enjoy a, a, a different, a little different initiative too. Yeah, I, I imagine. Yeah. 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 So yes, yeah, so I'll put it on the agenda. So. Okay. Any, thank you, Rich. Anyone else have anything not anticipated by the chair? Oh, just oh. to let you know, I'm going to miss the next two meetings. I'm oh, going to be away. I'm going to be away in two weeks in New Mexico for a wedding. And then in June, I'm going to be away the first two weeks of June at a workshop. Okay. All right. Well, I'll continue. I'll send you all the information as normal so you can just read it all. But yeah, have a have a wonderful time if uh, we don't see you. Thank you. Between now and then. So uh, any anyone else have anything? All right. So do we, uh, David, when you, if you hear back from the school, will you just let me know? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Thank yeah. you. I'd, look, I'd like to, watch. Tony did send me an email. I did respond to him and told him, yes, I'm aware of it. And let me know what you, what, what you need from me. So I didn't, I didn't say anything else other than that. So I'm well, looking right. forward well, to walking around. Send another email to him. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They're kind of involved with the school budget issue. I think he's sort of busy with that. So, um, Okay. Um, with that said, could we, I guess if no one else has any other comments, okay to adjourn the meeting a few minutes early. All right. Okay. Can we get a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. I have a second. Second. Any discussion? There's never any discussion about this. Thank you. <laughs> All in favor, raise your hands, please. So we can see on the screen. Thank you very much.